Okay, so I'm not sure what to talk about. So let's let's just go ahead and get started. I guess I should do an introduction because Alfredo didn't do one. Anyways, um, so this is Synergy, codependence basically. And that's kind of Alfredo and I as codependence. So the idea for this was taken from John Green and Hank Green's YouTube series blog thing called the vlog brothers so hopefully we can live up to that what we're going to do alfredo and i is kind of taking the vlog brothers idea and then also doing like veritasium slash crash course science slash history slash bill nye slash so what i'm going to start off with is kind of a very 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 simple explanation of the history on how particle physics and astrophysics became astroparticle physics or particle astrophysics. So in ancient times you had like four or five elements which were like wind, earth, fire, water, maybe something called the ether or the void. The Chinese did have something called wood and metal. That's beside the point. What was cool about these is that they actually represented the phases of matter. Earth being solid, water being a liquid, air being gas, and fire being a plasma, which is really cool that they identified those individual phases of matter and applied them to everyday experiences. So that was the beginning of particle physics, which kind of goes into chemistry and then modern day particle physics. During the same time, you had a perspective on astrophysics, we, we would call it, uh, where you had the flat earth with the dome and the stars sat on top of the dome uh, in the ether, whatever culture you were from. And then both of these, particle physics, or study of elements, uh, went down the line and then part of it trailed off into alchemy and that was crazy. And then you had astrophysics, which went down and you had like uh, Ptolemy who had the perspective of a geocentric solar system and then Al Sophie, who uh, first recorded the measurement of little clouds, potentially galaxies. I think he recorded Andromeda. And then you had Copernicus, and he reinforced the heliocentric model, and Brahe, and Kepler, and Galileo. During Copernicus's time, he also had a competing science called astrology, which uh, we still see a little bit today. I happen to be a Libra, and it keeps going until uh, 1687, when we have Sir Isaac Newton, who uh, develops the law of gravity and motion in his book, The Principia. During this time, he also comes up with calculus and comes up with ideas of optics, which goes into the particle physics side as photons and light. Then we move into uh, the 1700s, and this is where we get a lot of work with astronomy, 1700s and 1800s. A lot of cataloging, not really studying the motions, but just cataloging, cataloging what they've seen, what people observe. During the same time, you have Lavoisier, who is developing uh, stronger concepts in chemistry. He makes detailed measurements of mass, and uh, during this time, we're discovering elements uh, of which you've got hydrogen and oxygen and silicon and sulfur. Uh, up to, I think, 33 elements have been cataloged. And then in 1869, you have Mendeley, who comes in and organizes the periodic table based on trends that he finds in these elements. And this is amazing because the periodic table has such powerful predictive ability on the elements. Now we've moved into the 1890s, and you have Lord Kelvin, who has said that they've discovered everything. There's nothing left in physics to discover. Now it's just we need to apply things. Uh, he did admit that there were two things which I'm not going to try to explain in this video, maybe later. It has to do with light and uh, black body radiation. And then the 1900s, everything explodes. In 1895, so not quite the 1900s, 1895, Rotengen discovers the X-ray. 1897, Tom Thomson discovers electrons. Rutherford discovers the alpha particle or helium nucleus. Uh, and then Villiard in 1900 uh, discovers gamma radiation. So I guess now we're getting to the 1900s. In 1905, you get Bohr, who develops the Bohr model of the atom, and then quantum mechanics explodes in between 1905 and 1940 with the discovery of the proton in 1919, the neutron in 1932, 
Now we switch back to astrophysics in 1905, we get special relativity with Einstein. And then 1916, general relativity, where we, we see that mass curve space. And then we move into actual astrophysics, where we're measuring the physics of things in space. It's no longer categorizing, it's actually measuring the physics of things. And there were various other discoveries, but I'm running out of time. So let's get to the point. 1942, Zwicky says that there's something wrong. Galaxies are moving, and the calculations they're doing is showing that there should be more mass than what they're detecting, dark matter. 1960s, you get the quark model in particle physics, which moves into something called the standard model of particle physics, developed between the 1960s to 1985. And this model is able to predict things with ultra high precision. However, it's missing a few things, which we'll come back to in just a sec. So in astrophysics 1964, one of the last things we'll look at is there's the discovery of the cosmic microwave background, giving evidence for a Big Bang. So, the standard model of particle physics is missing some key points. It, it gets all these particles that can predict things, but it's missing dark matter, dark energy, which accounts for inflation, kind of. It doesn't account for inflation either, the standard model. And one of the fundamental parts of physics, where was, when did physics develop? With gravity. The standard model of particle physics does not have an explanation for gravity. So there's a problem with that. And that's something I'm going to be looking at this semester. And that's about all I have for you right now and I feel like I've gone way over. It'll be shorter, it'll be better planned, I'll probably script it next time. Anyways, until next time, Alfredo, <laughs> I hope you enjoy this. Bye.